joined presently by Senator Cardin, soon by Senator Brown and Senator Shaheen, but we'll start. Um, this evening, President Trump is set to deliver his first official State of the Union address. I want to talk just for a moment about the things we expect him to say, as well as what we imagine he'll leave out. First, the White House has said the President intends to take credit for the economy. Just as he was born on third base and assumed he hit a triple, the President thinks our economic recovery is all thanks to him, when reality is that he owes a lot of it to Barack Obama. Two words I don't think we'll hear tonight on the economy. Thanks, Obama. Under President Trump, under President Obama, the employment rate plummeted from 10 percent to down under five. The stock market, which Trump constantly brags about, grew faster under Obama than it has under Trump. And President Obama created more jobs in his first year than President Trump did in his. Second, we expect the, talk, the President to talk about bipartisanship. But throughout his time in office, he has failed to walk the walk. The administration has repeatedly excluded Democrats from working on major policy initiatives, from taxes to health care. Their version of bipartisanship is having Republicans get together in a back room, write a bill, and then pound the table and demand that Democrats support it with no input at all. But lastly, one thing I bet the President will leave behind is Russia. Throughout his term in office, President Trump has failed time and time again to stand up to Vladimir Putin, despite the assault that he carried out on our democracy in the 2016 elections. Now that President Trump has decided not to implement the sanctions that Congress passed with an overwhelming 97 to 2 bipartisan vote in the Senate and similar in the House, we are now that he's now he he has decided not to implement those sanctions these are mandatory sanctions they passed 97 to 2 in the senate he's ignoring them and he's not implementing them even though they were mandatory making things worse just this morning the russian embassy tweeted that the head of russia's foreign intelligence sergey narishkin a man under sanction by the United States was in our country meeting with his U.S. counterparts. The Trump administration must immediately come clean and answer questions. Which U.S. officials did he meet with? Did any White House or National Security Council official meet with Narishkin? What did they discuss? Surely he didn't come alone. So which other sanctioned Russian intelligence agency figures has the Trump administration led into our country? And, most important, is his visit why the Trump administration decided to forego sanctions, which, as you know, the deadline was yesterday. This is a serious national security issue. Russia hacked our elections. We sanctioned the head of their foreign intelligence, and then the Trump administration invites him to waltz through our front door. There, this is an extreme dereliction of duty by President Trump, who seems more intent on undermining the rule of law in this country than standing up to Putin. Instead of spending all of his time attempting to undermine the credibility of the FBI and waging an all-out assault on American institutions, the President should train his fire on the foreign adversary, Russia, that attacked us. When it comes to Russia, President Trump has fallen down on the job time and time and time again. He owes the American people some answers. Senator Cardin. Well, thank you, Senator Schumer. I'm pleased to be joined by Senator Brown. The two of us and our committees have worked on the Russia sanction bill and Senator Shaheen, who is a very active partner uh, in our Russian policy. Uh, let me make uh, uh, an observation. And that is the legislation that passed the United States Congress passed overwhelmingly. It was a clear message that Russia is engaged in activities against our country that require mandatory action. That's what Congress agreed by overwhelming majority. And to date, 
not one sanction has been imposed under that legislation by President Trump. President Trump has said over and over again that he believes Mr. Putin and when Mr. Putin says he was not involved in our elections. And then this past weekend, we see what happened in the Czech Republic, where clearly Russia was actively engaged in their elections and may very well have had an impact on the final results. Russia is engaged. They have, Mr. Putin has not slowed down. He's, in, he, he's engaged here. And I, there, there's real concern about what he'll do in the 2018 elections. And the President of the United States is not taking action to defend this nation. He's not using the tools that Congress made available, and that is jeopardizing our national security interest. So, as I said, there are many sections in that bill, including uh, sanctions for cyber, sanctions for human rights violations, for corruption violations, for a whole host of, of activities, and the President has not used any of those tools for sanctions against Russia. The report that was due yesterday on Section 231 dealt with the defense and intelligence sector. And yet there is no determination that any individual had significant transactions with the defense and intelligence community. That's hard to comprehend. So what we are calling upon, and Senator Brown and I are authoring a letter uh, to Secretary Tillerson and Secretary Mnuchin. We'll be joined by other members uh, of the United States Senate. But we're asking uh, uh, our, uh, the two secretaries to explain what process was used, why there has been no sanctions imposed under all these sections, to explain to us the process that was used in making these determinations. Congress has a responsibility to oversight what this president is doing and to, to do everything we can to make sure that he carries out uh, the, uh, the statutes that we have passed. Mr. Putin will test as far as he can take us. And if he sees softness in the U.S. resolve, he will do more. President Trump is giving Mr. Putin that opportunity to create more problems in the, in the United States. One last point is the Oligarch report that was released today. I have not had a chance to review the classified part of that report. But the public part of that report was a custom, cut and paste from, uh, looks like, the Forbes magazine. That's not what we expected. We expected the administration to take this issue seriously, and it looks from what we've seen so far that they have not. And with that, let me turn it over to Senator Brown. Uh, Senator Cardin, thank you, and Senator Schumer and Senator Shaheen, uh, for the, particularly Senator Cardin's work on sanctions for most of his career here, we're grateful for. Uh, after the Bolshevik Revolution, after World War II, tens of thousands of Ukrainians moved to Cleveland and Toledo into my state. And the Ukrainian community knows all too well the effects of unchecked Russian aggression, and they know why these sanctions are needed. Now, put, put this in some historical context. Uh, when, when we pass sanctions, when Senator Cardin's committee, uh, the Foreign Relations Committee, and Senator Shaheen and others in the Banking Committee wrote the Russian sanctions bill, we did it unlike any other sanctions bill. Traditionally, you write a sanctions bill aimed at North Korea or Iran or other countries, and you leave discretion to the president for humanitarian reasons. If there's starvation, if there's, if there's a, uh, an, an outbreak of some illness, uh, you give the president discretion to relax the sanctions to save lives. We didn't do that in this case. We didn't do that because, frankly, nobody in either party Nobody in either party trusts this president to represent American national interests when it comes to Russia. This bill passed 98 to 2 in the Senate. There were three no votes in the House. I believe the total vote was 517 to 5, saying to this president, we're not giving you any discretion. Move on these sanctions. Move on these sanctions um, against the Russians on a whole host of issues. Today, uh, Secretary of the Treasury Mnuchin testified in the Banking Committee. Senate Democrat, banking Democrat after Democrat brought up to Mnuchin, when are you going to move on these sanctions? And he's doing a slow walk. He's simply not doing what Congress want, what the House wanted him to do, 419 to 3, what the Senate wanted him to do, 98 to 2. Um, curiously, the Republicans on our committee were pretty much silent. They may have thought back months ago when we passed the sanctions bill that they couldn't trust this president to represent American national interests in Russia when it comes to Russia. They seem to have forgotten that lesson. And it's important that the president finally step up, move forward on these sanctions. It matters to our national security. It matters to the fairness of our elections. It matters to us as a nation. 
Senator Shaheen. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Senator Shaheen. Well, the Trump administration has had six months to configure a sanctions regime, regime, sanctions based on a vote, as you heard from Senator Brown, 517 to 5 in Congress. And what did they come up with? They gave us this list. This is the unclassified list. As Senator Cardin said, the oligarchs that are part of this list are taken from Forbes magazine. There are 210 names on this list. Now, there's a little note in the unclassified report that says those that are asterisks are the people who are sanctioned. But if you look at the 20 people out of the 210 that are sanctioned on this list, they were all sanctioned before the Trump administration got into office. So they were all people who were sanctioned under the Obama administration, mostly for what happened in Ukraine. So the Russians are stepping up their cyber attacks on the United States. They're stepping up their military threats. We saw just yesterday a Russian fighter that came within five feet of a U.S. Navy plane over the Black Sea. And yet, this administration is doing nothing to respond. We had a hearing in the Armed Services Committee today with three experts, and I was asking them about the Russian sanctions. And one of them said, when you're dealing with a bully, you have to punch back if you expect them to understand that we are a strong nation. Well, this administration is ignoring the threats against the United States. They're ignoring the threats against our elections coming up in 2018. They're ignoring what's happened in the Czech Republic in Mexico right now. And this cannot stand if we're going to send a strong message to Putin and his regime in Russia that we are not going to allow that in the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Great job. Thank you. Okay, questions. Have you spoken to the president or anyone at the White House about this sanctions issue, and what did they tell you? I have not spoken to the president about the sanctions issue. We have inquired of many different officials at the White House, and we're not getting much of an answer. Where, where are we on top of concerning the fact that everybody's going to be out the rest of the week? Is this group of 22 going to be the linchpin? Well, the bipartisan group is making very good progress. They met late yesterday. They're meeting this afternoon, and both sides report to me that progress is being made. Let's hope they can come up with a compromise that can get 60 votes in the Senate. I'm hopeful. Can they vote Next. Uh, there are various pieces of legislation to protect Robert Mueller. Uh, will you tie this in budget negotiations? Our we, we would very, is it your bottom line? Must it be included? We, look, we'd very much like to put it in legislation. Our Republican colleagues have thus far resisted. I, I have to say I'm really appalled by our Republican colleagues in reference to this. They've always been defenders of the FBI and protagonists of Putin. And they seem to have flipped. They remind me of a movie, The Silence of the Lambs. They're just not saying a thing. But we're going to push hard to get it in. Senator Schumer uh, and the main for as well. Senator Corker said today that on the whole it is clear the administration is working in good faith with respect to the, the sanctions matter. Your, your perception is completely different from that, I think. Well, look at the statute. The statute says that the president, it's mandatory to identify those individuals that have had significant transactions with the Russian military, uh, defense, or intelligence. It's just hard to believe that there isn't one entity that has had a significant transaction uh, with uh, the defense or intelligence sector. We know of Russia's active engagement in Syria, and yet no one's identified in regards to those activities for sanctions. So it's hard to believe that they could not have shown some sanction activity to the public. Uh, there is a classified version of this report, which I cannot comment about. But it is uh, for, the, uh, the, for the president, uh, message to the American people, and more importantly to Mr. Putin, is that there's not going to be sanctions under this legislation. Now, we, I heard they say this is day one. We're now on day two. We need, we need action. Okay, we'll take one more. Go ahead. The White House has indicated that the president will have a moderate sort of bipartisan type speech tonight. This 
White House has had different messages at times very conservative, at times changing stances. Do you think there's anything you can take away from this speech no. tonight? No. Look. The president, if he talks about bipartisanship, this has been the most partisan administration that I have served under, and that starts with Ronald Reagan. Republican presidents Reagan, H.W. Bush, W. Bush were far more bipartisan than this administration. So the words won't mean much. He's got to walk the walk. For instance, on infrastructure, are they going to do what they've done in the past, put out their own bill and say, take it or leave it? That wouldn't be very bipartisan. Thank you, everybody.